Hey guys, today I am going to show you how to make this. So, let's get started. Let's get started. As you can see here, I have this uh, little form that uh, recognizes the text I speak, speaks the text to me, and also can respond to me speaking to it. Now, I've had a lot of requests for this, and it's quite simple to make, actually. So we're going to start with a new project here, and we're just going to name it Speaker. So all you need for this, really, is one text box. Click this little arrow, click multi-line, and drag it until it fits almost the whole form. Now you're going to drag a button on, drag it over to the left. With the button selected, click con or hit Control and C, deselect, Control and V, and do that again until you have three buttons. Now we're going to rename this button to Speak Text. So that's going to speak the text that is in the text box. This is going to be start, and this button is going to be stop. Now we're going to double click on our form to go to the code. We're going to add some using namespaces, or whatever you'd like to call them, up here. So we're going to say using system.speech. And one thing that you have to do before doing this is go over here click references, right click, add reference. This is a bit different with Visual Studio 2012. All the rest, it'll be .NET, I believe, over in the left. But go to framework in 2012, scroll down until you see system.speech. Click the little checkbox, click OK. Now we're going to go back into our code. And we're going to use system.speech.synthesis. Now we're going to need to also go down and create two using system.speech.recognition and using system system.threading. Speech synthesis will allow us to create a talking voice and recognition will allow the computer to recognize our voice. Now we're going to go back and we are going to start with the speak text. So we're going to double click on our speak text button. And we're going to create a few variables up here. So we need a speech synthesizer. So we're going to type in speech synthesizer. And then I'm just going to call the variable s synth. And then we hit equals new speech synthesizer. Sorry and left and right parentheses. Now we need a prompt builder, which basically tells it what to speak. And we're, so we're going to say prompt builder p builder equals new prompt builder, left and right. And now we need a speech recognition engine. So we're going to type in speech recognition engine s recognize. I'm going to put equals new speech recognition engine. All right. So whenever people click this button one, which is speak text, we need to clear the content that is going to be spoken. We need to um, tell it the text and we need it to speak. So how we do this is P builder or whatever your variable for the prompt builder is dot clear content which will clear the content that is being spoken or has been into the variable and then pbuilder dot append text and then left parenthesis and this is where you put your text in that you want it to speak but say we want it to do what's in the text box we do text box one dot text and then right parenthesis semicolon now we do s synth dot speak. So now it's going to speak. And what is it going to speak? Our prompt builder. So we put our prompt builder variable in there. All right. So now we can test this out real quickly. I have typed in hello. Hello. Speak text. Hello. Hello. And now hello. we have that. <clears throat> so now we're going to go to our next button, which is start. So now when we push start, we want stop 
We want start to be disabled, the button, and stop to be enabled. So we're going to get to the stop button later, but right now we want button 2.enable equals false, so they cannot click start again. Now we need button 2.enable equals true. We will in, uh, disable that later. So now we also need to set the grammar, so to speak. And this is for the speech recognizer. It will only recognize the words that you type in the code. So how we do that is we need to create a choices variable. So we type choices, and then I'm going to name it speech list. So s list equals, and then new choices, left and right parentheses. Now we need s list dot add, and we're going to add things to this. And then left parenthesis new string and left and right brackets to create a array or an array and then we need a left curly brackets and a right curly brackets and then um, right parenthesis and semicolon now in these curly brackets you type all the text I want so we're gonna just type a few things in here hello and then separate with commas all lowercase test it works and I'm gonna pause the video and add a bunch more in you can add whatever you like um, these all need to be separate words preferably it works um, I just wanted that to be in there so I've added some things here you can see and now what we need to do is create our grammar so now that we have the list we need to create a grammar so grammar and then I'm just gonna gr the variable equals new grammar and then inside that we need a new grammar builder and then what do we want in it s list and then two uh, right parentheses and semicolon now we're going to put some try and catch statements in here just to prevent any errors uh, try enter right bracket left bracket the curly ones and then catch and then same here, return from there. We're just going to do this to prevent smears. Okay, so now that we have that done, we need to get this thing recognizing. So s recognize our variable that request recognizer update. So that's going to update with the uh, stuff below. s recognize dot load grammar, and then left parenthesis, and then the name of our grammar, which is gr. Right parentheses semicolon and now we need our s recognize dot speech recognize and then what we're going to do is we're going to plus equal to and then we need s rec s rec cog sorry about that uh, when it says uh, plus equal just press tab and then there we have that all right so now that is created for us we may have to click this we'll create a new void with speech recognized all right so now after this we're going to do s recognize dot set input to default audio device and this will tell it um, which microphone to use and it's just going to use the system default now s recognize dot recognize async and then recognize mode dot multiple and what that should do is it should allow it to um, recognize multiple words I'm not exactly sure with that but uh, that should be what it does alright so now this should be good now what we need to tell it what to do when the speech is recognized so we're going to test this first before we do anything with a message box dot show and then how we get the text is we use this variable e so we're going to do um, speech recognized and then we're just going to do e dot result dot text dot to string a lot of stuff there but that should give us our text that or our 
words that we spoke. So now I'm going to start this and click start and I'm going to say hello. Hello. And that worked. So let's see, we should be able to say there's so. It works. It. Okay. So that works now. Now what we can do is we can control our program with if statements. So I, I added exit in our grammar. So if we do if e dot result dot text equals two equal signs exit we can say app application dot exit now that should close our program and else we're just gonna add the text to the text box so how we're gonna do this is text box sorry about that Windows 8 with that uh, start button it's kind of annoying text box one dot text equals text box one dot text so this will append the text or add it to what it is plus a space plus e dot result dot text dot two string left right parenthesis semicolon we can debug and test this out hello it works test how are you today exit all right so now that we have that working we just need to work on some of the aesthetics here our start and stop buttons so we're gonna by default we want the stop button to be enabled to false so we're gonna scroll up and down here until we find enabled set it to false <clears throat> and when we click start we want button 2 dot enabled equals false and we want button 3 there was our mistake there that enabled to be true so now when they click the stop button we're gonna do that now so s recognize dot stop we're just gonna um, type stop and it gives us recognize async stop left right parenthesis and that will stop the recognition and then we're gonna do button two dot enabled equals true and button three dot enabled equals false okay let's test this out and this should work for us hello test it works sorry about that I think it said uh, I thought I said it said exit <laughs> keep saying exit so our stop button is disabled now it's enabled and it goes back and forth and we have no errors so that is good hello test it works hello hello test test it works it works and we have some errors there, but um, I find that that I'm not quite sure how to fix that. But um, thank you for watching. Um, this came as a video request, so if you have any other requests, um, let me know, and I'll try to get those up for you. So thank you for watching.